walking the floor here at GTC 13 and I see this thing and I gotta stop. What's going on? You guys are what, Creative well, C? Yeah, we're Creative C. We're a um, high performance com computing um, consulting company. We also do um, uh, systems integrations. We have here um, wow. a visualization platform that's running off of one node. Uh, we have six screens running. Uh, we can go up to about 16 screens on one of our nodes, and these are custom made nodes, so uh, using uh, GPUs, of course. Um, you have, uh, when nine screens are up, we have uh, eight, over 18 million pixels. Uh, the content that you see up here is only shown in a, a few different places in the world. We're in cap collaboration with Cal IT2 with yeah. KAUST, which is King Abdullah University of Science and Technology. If you want to come over here, yeah. we'll see a little bit of the resolution that you're looking at. This content was collected during the political unrest in um, Egypt. Uh, we were able to uh, get Dr. Habas, thankfully, you might have heard of him on yeah. Discovery Channel. Or, I'm going to um, pretend like I have. Okay, okay wonderful. Cool. Yeah, sure, and so, of course. Yeah, he um, was able to get us in here, so we'll just give you a little tour. This is a 360 degree camera um, that was able to capture about yeah. um, 70 um, pictures. It was hand stitched, but I mean, just take a look at the, the detail. The details on this. On this. I, I, this is only 1080p, but the detail I'm actually seeing with my eyes is uh, incredible. Right. And we love this. I mean, I worked in tourism for 10 years in Rome, and you, you sit there and uh, you worry about all the tourists coming to visit these things, and a lot of them are shut down. So what happens is um, having something that historically preserves something to this resolution is fantastic for a, you know tourism. Uh, we have, also have a cyber archaeology demo, which um, has LiDAR scans, 20 million points, of a archaeological dig that Dr. Neil Smith did from uh, Cal IT2. He's now at Kaust as well, but he was captured this uh, archaeological dig from 800 BC, and oh, so wow. we can load that up if you'd like as well. Now, what are we looking at here? Well, this and is who actually. Are you? Oh, my name is Tim Thomas. Tim I'm Thomas, one of the okay. consultants that works with the consultants. I'm actually research faculty of physicist at the University of New Mexico. Oh, ah, okay. And uh, I've been long excited by uh, Greg Scanlon's vision that this company is uh, executing. This is sort of our penultimate project. This is called Scorpi. And the idea here is that we scientists would love, in many circumstances, to be able to simulate the real world in great fidelity mm -hmm. and in a way that they can see on the fly. So traditional supercomputers, like we can talk about over here in a moment, they're great at running jobs, sort of batch jobs, like um, sure. the accounting department or the uh, accounts receivable department yeah. would submit to a mainframe computer in the old days to reconcile business records. That's great. You submit a job, you come back eight hours later and maybe discover that the job had a bug and it died five minutes after you left. Or you come back eight hours later and you got data, but you had creative ideas and you implemented them in one shot and eight hours later you get the answer. That and your visualization is going to have to come from Excel. That's right. And your, your, your creative cycle is slowed down greatly. What we have here is we have an integration of a high performance computing platform that can fit in your office with a multi-panel integrated display. We've got 18 megapixels on this panel. And we've got one computer that's using three NVIDIA GPUs to render the three rows of the imagery. Okay. And it's receiving data to display from two computers over here that are using six uh, NVIDIA GPUs to compute this toy. This is just a toy molecular dynamics model with about a half a million particles in it. And uh, So we've got six GPUs total, three doing the compute and three doing the visualization. That's right. And honestly, at 300, uh, at three, it's, it's actually about 380,000 particles. These GPUs are yawning. They need more work. Yeah, it's not yet. And the visualization GPUs are yawning. We could actually pass some work to the visualization GPUs. That's a bit more technical because then you have to synchronize things properly because yeah. those GPUs are running more slowly. This you you could render this Adobe for me after I'm done shooting this and still have plenty of room. Okay. That's right. But this is all happening in real time. So if I, I spin this around for you, I zoom in, I zoom out, uh, I can translate it, rotate it. This is all this is all happening in real time. So example, No hitch in it at all. If I decide that I want to change the nature of the simulation, maybe I'll add some gravity in the z-direction. I'll dump all these particles against the back wall, as it turns out. So let me, let me rotate this. And I see, so I've turned up gravity, and all of a sudden the particles are all raining down in that direction. Well, if I reverse it, if I feel like reversing gravity, I zoom out a little bit here. Uh, if I feel like reversing gravity, now all the particles are going to fly up to the ceiling, but you see, I'm steering that simulation in real time. And there are many circumstances where this is almost more than, than some sciences need, yeah. but more and more, this kind of simulation where you can run for a very long time to get to a certain state and then discover that, you know, the road less traveled is the one you want to take, 
and it's coming up and you've got to steer it now. You can't wait eight hours because you submitted the job and turn around and come back. This is transformative stuff. And this, this is, is quick Greg's easy. vision has long been to put this it's together. It's a quick way to see if your hypothesis is close or if you're way off. That's right. That's right. Without so, having to pour through the numbers. That's right. And then if we step over to here, yeah. if you don't have this kind of visualization capability, the kind of supercomputer that we have behind the wall there, the more this traditional. This is what caught my eye originally. Yeah, this is a more traditional supercomputer. This is two nodes. It can host a lot of GPUs. Right now, this company is still doing a ver validation and verification of some new algorithms on GPUs. But we have 128 uh, bulldozer cores in here, and this thing can hold up to a terabyte of memory. So and two nodes of dual socket uh, Two nodes of boards. dual okay. socket, and it can be quad socket. I mean, whatever the so highest end server boards. To, okay. You notice the, the design here. This thing is designed to be in your office, <laughs> plug into a 150 volt outlet, and run quietly at full bore with 1.7 or 1.8 kilowatts the heat coming out of this thing because it's a supercomputer. And this particular one, we worked with a company called Materials Design to integrate their product called Medea, which stands oh, okay. for Materials Engineering Design and Analysis. Okay. It's a software stack, which they've been selling the software stack for a very long time. They're, 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 a, they're a company with worldwide representation, and they specialize in integrating software that does computational chemistry and, and computational material dynamics, uh, molecular dynamics and materials design. And so here, for example, running on this system. So for people who are Unix savvy, this is just a, si a, a system that happens to be running Scientific Linux, which is a deriv derivative of Red Hat Enterprise. Sure. Um, so that I'm running top to see what it's doing, and right now it's not doing too much. We've got Torque as the job manager, Ganglia as the system monitor, so it's all familiar to scientific types that do this sort of thing. But on top of that, they've taken a number of different tools, such as the Vienna Group's uh, Ab initio quantum chemistry calculation, um, the LAMPS, uh, 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 classical molecular dynamics sure. calculation from Sandia, and a number of other uh, different algorithms, and they've integrated them, they've hardened them, it's bulletproof, there's a beautiful GUI, the user doesn't really need to know what's going under the hood, you just immediately jump into the problem. So this is, I mean, this is a workload optimized system. This, this is, is a workload optimized for... system, and in this case, I've calculated the I mean, this is spectrum really of crystal and silicons, optimized. and the system will even produce a movie of a particular vibration mode. I, I, been... the, I pick some direction in the crystal, and I immediately get a movie of how the, the silicon is vibrating But it's been configured and tweaked to run this software Absolutely. and run it like a scalded bat. Absolutely, and you and you buy this. Fast, right? You you buy this from Materials Design, but under the hood, uh, uh, Creative C has helped integrate the software with that particular hardware platform. This is great. So now, what's this one over here? To the uh, right. I'm gonna let Kathy talk. Well, about resellers this. for ZSpace, which you might have seen, um, they're a holographic environment. Um, this is a uh, head tracking. So, oh, uh, okay. yeah, you can know, just put it over your video if you want. We've done that before. Really? <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that will help you. So as you move the glasses, the picture moves. Right. So, in fact, you can kind of follow this as it oh, picks okay. it up. It fo it's following the glasses wherever it's it goes. It's a 3D. And, yeah, 3D holographic environment. So we can pick it up in this kind of um, space. Um, oh, like the heart. It's like a high-tech game of operation. Yeah. So there's lots of different applications. This is just one for um, a medical. Actually, through the stylus that you're looking at, mm -hmm. you can actually pick up the heart. You see it's beating over there, but through the stylus, you can actually feel the heartbeat, for example. Okay, um, we can resize that heart. Let me put on the glasses so I can see what I'm doing. Sure. Wow, yeah, it really pops it out. Um, but here we wow. go. That's a little too much. That's a little too much, you can't see that. Okay. But, well, it must uh, be coming right into your eyes. Right, it literally, um, Comes, uh, jumps out. <laughs> um, so we have you know, different things. You can take out that camera, for example. I'll mm -hmm. put these glasses back on. <laughs> and then we'll take the camera and we can look through that uh, window oh, wow. over there. So the camera's there. inside the heart and we're looking inside. We're looking inside the lungs, now inside the heart. You can dissect it uh, by and looking only at certain ventricles in the but heart. This, this is this a di this isn't a diagnostic tool. I mean, this is an example of a heart. This is this just isn't a somebody's demo. heart. Right. This okay, is but not for but for your students, and then this is just a, something to show what could be done. Exactly. With the technology. Okay. Yeah, and so we have a um, like this. For example, this is uh, maybe for our architecture. We'll move this up and down. Uh, right. So a highly interactive. Virtual holographic environment. Virtual holographic environment. It's very cool. Yeah. Z space is right across the way as well. Okay. That you can, so, but we're resellers for them. 
Um, Greg, uh, or Tim was talking to you about the stiletto, um, our hardware, if you want mm -hmm. to get some more specifics on the actual stiletto that uh, we made the turnkey into. Yeah, is that... I think that... So this is our, this is our stiletto. This yeah. is half of the node. So half, you got a full stiletto and a half stiletto. We have a half stiletto, which is called a demi. Um, demi stiletto. Yes. So it's essentially the difference between one node and two nodes in the Right, box. and that's connected by InfiniBand. Uh, the two nodes inside? The two nodes inside. So it is really high performance inside that box. It is really, really high performance. I mean, um, okay, so Medea, they are not using GPUs, but generally our stilettos. But they could. Well, yeah, they could. We have Intel that go all the way up to eight GPUs in one box, for example. Wow. That's impressive. This is cool stuff. Well, thank well, you. Thank you. I really appreciate nice it. Nice meeting you. Yeah. Come check out our website, creativec.com. Absolutely. Okay.